Hi everyone, my name is Efe and my advisor is Dr. Kurt. Today I will be presenting you all our study about identifying meningioma adhesion and consistency. For those of you who don't know, meningioma is a primary brain tumor. And in 2019, it is expected that in the US, 32,000 people will be diagnosed with meningioma. And during the meningioma tumor removal surgery, the main reason during the surgical tool usage or choice is based on the tumor's stiffness. So right now, with the existing technology called MR elastography, we are able to identify whether the tumor is soft like a toothpaste or is it rock solid. And in MR elastography, we place a vibration source beneath the head inside of a MRI scanner. And then from the shear waves generated, we are able to capture a stiffness map which provides how stiff the tumor or the brain in general is. Right now, the only company which sells MRE or MR elastography systems by getting an FDA approval is the company called Resoundant. And the whole system is costing $400,000 and it contains a vibration source and an MRI sequence. So their vibration source lacks on two aspects, which we try to address by coming up with a new uh, vibration actuator design. During deep tissue imaging, the resolution is poor and also the wave attenuates earlier before it reaches to deep tissue areas. So with this design, which we called pneumatically driven rotary actuator, we are able to answer both of these questions. And furthermore, this is a 3D printed device, which is low in cost, MR safe, and again, it solves all the issues that have been faced with resonant. On the right, we are able to see that meningioma tumors differ in size and location. With the MR elastography provided stiffness maps, right now we are able to say that tumors also differ in stiffness. And with this information being provided to the neurosurgeons ahead of surgery, right now they are able to do a pre-surgical planning in a mo more comprehensive manner by benefiting from these mechanical parameters such as stiffness and viscosity, as can see from these plots. On the other hand, let's say instead of using an external vibration source, as in the case of resoundant, we can use heart as an intrinsic actuator. And what I mean by intrinsic actuator is that during each cardiac cycle, the accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid puts brain in motion. And these small motions can be amplified by using a video magnification technique so that we make these visible to the naked human eye. And eventually, this allows us to capture motion magnified videos. So right now, what we are trying to accomplish is we want to use these videos again to identify the consistency of the tumors by tracking the relative movements of these purple tags. And furthermore, we want to understand how firmly the tumor is adhered to the surrounding healthy brain tissue, again by tracking the relative movements between these purple and green tags. The reason is this information is so vi vital during uh, surgical plane preservation since this is purely related with adhesion strength. All in all, the cost of brain surgery for tumor removal is so expensive. We want to decrease this cost and we want to license our imaging process to the hospitals so that neurosurgeons and radiologists can benefit from this. And furthermore, we want to commercialize our MRE actuator system so that MRE can be used in each every hospital. Thank you all for listening. Sure. On the previous slide, the, so there's a purple and green region. Yes. How are you distinguishing? Is that simply relative spatial? How are you characterizing green versus purple? In so in here, we first label the meningioma region versus the surrounding health brain area. Okay. And then we perform tagging. And from that, we are able to say these tags are overlapped on the meningioma portion because we use previously generated masks that overlay on those regions. Then we perform tags based on these pr predefined areas. So from the earlier scan, you know, exactly. The, exactly. you know the location, but you don't know the adhesion or consistency. Exactly. Okay. What's the resolution you can do? I mean, how small you can do? So 0 0.183 millimeter, the voxel edge, or the dimension of the pixel, what you can say, yeah.
So that's a rely on, so you have to rely on the heart beating, then the... Exactly. Okay. Uh, on the uh, machinery that you showed, sure. what, what, what does that do? So in here, the compressed air passes through these holes and it rotates the turbine. And we have a uh, opposed fiber optic probe tip, which is also MR compatible because we need to position all these setup inside the MRI scanner. And eventually, we use a gear reduction system at the tip of this shaft, which we have a off-centered mass. So this can be taught as throwing a brick inside of a washing machine so that it eventually generates centrifugal force and creates oscillation. Yeah. So we've submitted an invention disclosure about this, and I gave a presentation. Yeah. In terms of using the, using the heart as mm -hmm. the source vibration, mm -hmm. so do you have data? Is that something you would like to do, or do you have data based on that? By data, what do you mean? Like these are the data that we already processed. So we have already processed Where eight minutes. the heart is the source. Exactly, exactly. So you use a pulse oximeter, which is pinned to the finger, and it is in sync with the MRI image capturing, so that in each every heartbeat, <coughs> we capture consecutive time frame images, and then we create these videos. And the pulse oximeter, oximeter is outside of the, the field. Look, it is pinned to your finger yeah. while you lay down in yeah. spine position, so yeah.